Welcome to Pageant Planet's podcast, where we share stories and strategies to help expand and connect the global pageant community. Visit pageantplanet.com to find pageants, hire coaches, shop for dresses, and more. Now, here's your host, Stephen Roddy. Welcome everyone to another Pageant Planet podcast. This is the podcast for contestants who want to be inspired and discover how to win the crown. Today, Jesse Ledoux McMullen, our queen of coaching, and myself are covering the life of Elizabeth Tran. We are excited to be speaking about a woman who is passionate about promoting environmentalism and sustainability, literally both on and off stage. And Elizabeth Tran is a graduate from the University of Florida with a master's in web design. She has a love for business and helping international investors to to small business owners. Wow. And as you would imagine, Elizabeth has competed in several pageants, both with and without Earth-related platforms. She has experience competing in a variety of state, national, and international pageants, including National American Miss, International Junior Miss Junior Teen, Miss Collegiate America, Miss Earth United States, Miss Tourism Planet, and Face of the Beauty International. Pageantry is where Elizabeth developed a strong work ethic for both academics and nonprofit activities. She also may be one of the only pageant contestants we know who has competed on stage with a broken ankle and a full leg cast. You haven't heard? We'll fill you in. So keep on listening. So, but first, I want to give a contestant shout out to Brittany Herman. Britt is a member of our VIP community and is busy preparing for Miss Utah USA. She's a new attorney, so congrats to her. And her platform focuses on sexual sexual assault prevention. So we want to wish you, Britt, the best of luck. And you can learn more about being a part of our VIP community by visiting pageantplanet.com backslash prep. Hmm. Elizabeth Parents immigrated from Hong Kong and Vietnam to pursue the American dream in Florida. And the two met at the Disney College program working at Chinese food in Epcot, or a Chinese working in a Chinese restaurant in Epcot. And this would eventually come back around as Elizabeth participated in the Disney Friends for Change program as an adolescent. Elizabeth's parents, being immigrants of Asian descent with a drive to succeed, put a huge emphasis through academics for Elizabeth. And she went through school remaining a straight A student at the top of her class. And this also made her a little bit shy, awkward, and maybe uh, maybe what some would call nerdy. Yeah, nerdy is trendy now. So she grew up with an older brother and now also has a younger sister. But growing up with an older brother made her embrace her tomboy side, so much so that she never felt very feminine and beautiful wearing dresses. While Elizabeth was very intelligent, the word pageant just wasn't in her vocabulary at first. It all started with a letter in the mail from National American Miss, and she learned that this was a competition where girls would wear dresses but didn't know anything else. So can you blame her, though? She was only eight years old. She probably didn't have a ton of insight into what pageantry is. Right. For four years, Elizabeth competed in Florida's National American Miss and the Miss American co-ed pageants, never placing once. She would usually be close to last place at the local or preliminary level, and she developed a mindset where she never expected to win, so she focused on just having fun each year, and she truly got the, to enjoy the experience because she didn't expect to win. Plus, at 12 years old, she was just trying to figure out who she was. At this time, there weren't YouTube channels or podcasts devoted to pageant coaching and information, so Elizabeth would learn through trial and error, and it would have almost been easier to quit. It was almost certainly have been easier to quit, especially after a family member told her she was too Chinese-looking to win an American pageant, which, like, yikes. Um, but quitting is not in her vocabulary. Uh, she, her, that's kind of like, you know, people make up all kinds of excuses that are not based in reality whatsoever. They just will throw things out at you. And I love the fact that she just rejected it, you know, just like, nope, I'm yeah. just going to keep going. Yeah. And people, some, some people, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was just like, I mean, people say you can't succeed because you're from a small town or, you know, like me, I can't succeed in pageantry because I don't know anything about pageantry, <laughs> which I mean, is pretty much a good, uh, that out of everything is a good thing, but in living proof that if you just continue on and you can find your own way through it, but people will make all kinds of excuses for you. And they project their own narrative onto you. Mm-hmm. Like they might not think they're pretty enough because they feel like they might look in this case, quote unquote, too Chinese. So they don't see themselves as beautiful. So they're not seeing her as beautiful or they're not finding success in their own small business. So therefore, Stephen, you can't be successful in your small business because you're from a small town too. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. Ugh. So it's, yeah. And they're basically, because if you succeed, 
then they have to look themselves in the mirror and say, why can't I pursue and achieve what I want? And so for some people, it's almost better for them if you don't succeed because they get to stay inside their excuses as to why they cannot succeed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you owe it to yourself and your community to go out and be a success. So just, you know, go out and be a massive success. Amen. So Elizabeth, she'd hear, hear this question. If you're representing the U.S., like, why are you Chinese? And she would answer, because my parents immigrated from Hong Kong and Vietnam to pursue the American dream. Because the U.S. is a melting pot of cultures and united by its diversity and acceptance. Because I don't need to succumb to Western beauty standards to proudly represent my nationality. I'm insanely blessed to live in the USA. My heart bursts knowing my parents came here to provide my, sam- my siblings and I uh, the life that they never had. And thankfully, Elizabeth discovered the world and magic of pageant coaches, uh, paired with that amazing optimism that you just heard. And she improved immensely as a junior teen with the help of various coaches. And she eventually won titles, including Miss American Co-Ed Victory Junior Teen and Teen, and also National American Miss Florida Junior Teen and Teen. And still four years of not placing was finally paying off. How many times are you willing to fail in order to succeed at winning your dream pageant? And that leads me to a coaching moment. And that's be the first. Just because no one has done it before doesn't mean you can't be the one to break the mold. So even though Elizabeth was hearing a lot of this negativity, both from her family and others about her appearance and her nationality, she didn't let that get to her. She continued to try because that's what she wanted to achieve. And I, I've talked about this multiple times on this podcast, but I think it's always worth repeating to those that are listening. And when I was a media correspondent at International Junior Miss National Pageant several years ago, I was interviewing um, a contestant. She represented New York. Her name was Alyssa Doss, and her name might sound familiar to you because she's won several national pageants since then. I asked her why she got involved in pageantry, and she said, and she's of Indian descent, and she said, I saw Nina Davalori win Miss America, so I had never seen anyone that looked like me win a pageant, and as soon as I saw her win, I knew I could do it too, Mm. which is so powerful. So the fact that Elizabeth here didn't allow that negativity to get to her and she still tried i'm sure she's inspiring other young women that are of asian descent to compete in pageants because now they saw her do it now they can do it too so don't be afraid if you've never seen anyone um that looks like you or has features or characteristics like you um succeed yet because you could be the first yeah and you hear it time and again like uh who's the guy that played like mr bean Oh, yeah. He doesn't talk during any Mm -hmm. of his stuff. You hear about him and you see like how wildly successful he was, but you don't see about when he got started, how no one really had the acting or the quirkiness that he did. And basically people are like, you're you're never going to go anywhere. You're not going to, you're not going to succeed at this. Like no one does what you do. Right. And so you can look at that as a negative. No one does what you do. Or you can see that as like, wow, no one else does what I do. So I just have to wait for the right role. And in this case, like no one looks the way that I am. No one has this uniqueness that I have. So I just need to look for the right pageant that will really um, that based on how the scoring is set up and how the culture is set up that I can succeed in that organization. So you're not tied to a certain system you know, you're tied to an outcome. And that's why it's really important for you to say like, what do I want to get out of this experience? And then that will set you up for success so that you really can be the first in your people group and your community of your culture or of your race to win a certain pageant um, because you know ultimately what you want to achieve out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Elizabeth also got to represent Florida at International Junior Miss Junior Teen and Miss Teen International, where she placed in the top five. One of the pinnacle points was when she participated in the Disney Friends for a Change program, and Elizabeth became even more aware and embedded in the fact that she wanted to develop a platform of environmental stability throughout pageantry and as her life's mission. 
Elizabeth founded her nonprofit organization, Teens Go Green, at just 13 years old. And this was a great way to apply what she had, was already doing at her school and in her community in a larger way. She would utilize her peers who needed volunteer hours and who were passionate about helping the planet. From Earth Day events to recycling projects to speaking at city hall meetings, Elizabeth was improving the earth one leaf at a time. Mm. Throughout Elizabeth's teen years, she was still very diligent in her studies, active in her community, and successful in pageantry. But one thing had changed. Once she found her purpose and founded her nonprofit organization, everything clicked in a different way, like a puzzle that was missing a piece. In high school, Elizabeth enjoyed being involved in academic-focused extracurricular activities, and she balanced being in the International Baccalaureate program, playing in band, and being on student council along with her pageant and charitable duties. Elizabeth and her mother were both very passionate about modeling and community service. The two created the Model for Miracles charity as Elizabeth was competing in Miss Florida's Outstanding Teen from twenty or from 2009 to 2011. And this system was very platform-focused, and she was able to use the crown for a lot of community service. They would hold an annual Miss Miracle charity pageant where the proceeds were donated to the Children's Miracle Network hospitals. And to date, they have they have fundraised for over one hundred and forty thousand dollars for the cause. Elizabeth placed in the top 10 for two years, then did not place her third year competing. But again, Elizabeth was comfortable with losing the title as long as she would win in her personal life and continue to develop her charity work. This showed since she won the Community Service Award each year, she competed at Miss Florida's Outstanding Teen, um, which brings me to a, a major coaching moment that I think every contestant should adopt. And you don't lose if winning isn't your only goal. And I say that because... As you set out to for your year as a local title holder or to, com- to prepare for to compete for a title, your goal should not just be winning. It's okay, what goals can I achieve this year that will lead me to that title? So they're not always pageant related. They're probably platform related, personal activity related, extracurricular related, charitable related. I know for me, one of my goals when I was competing for Miss International was I wanted to run a half marathon. And I was able to, I knew I was going to need to be in shape for Miss International. So I was like, well, I'm going to be getting fit anyway. I'm going to push my body to this place I'd never been pushed before. I'm going to do this with my dad. So that was another goal was spending more time with him. And all of which resulted in one, me being more physically fit, which I needed to be anyway. And it gave me something else to talk about as far as pushing myself to the limits in my pageant interview. So totally not related to pageantry at all. But it helped me in numerous ways as I looked to compete. So if you're listening to this podcast and you have the ability, I want you to pause the podcast right now. And I want you to think about three goals that you have that are not pageantry related that will kind of go parallel to your your preparation right now and give you layers of experience in your life outside of this that you will be grateful that you have when all is said and done. So three things not related to your pageant preparation directly, but will enhance who you are as a person. Mm. I mean, Elizabeth, she's tenacious. Mm-hmm. I mean, she just, keeps, word. she just keeps going and going and going. And despite what the results are. And if you're looking for like a principle in life, this is just perfect. I mean, if you get to one horizon, Right, you can see a horizon in a distance. You arrive at that, and then you see another horizon. It's just it's never ending. And in, in life, I mean, you're going through your job, and then you'll get a promotion. Well, it doesn't. You, your journey doesn't stop there. You know, so life is there is no pretty much stopping points in life. It's just one massive journey, and that's why it's like life is a journey. Got to enjoy the journey. Yep. Enjoy the journey because there's no arrival in life. And so I think that that's why what I call this post pageant uh, stress disorder is like after you won and you have this title and then you have to give up the title. It's like girls have this somewhat breakdown because they don't have Mm -hmm. the next horizon in mind. And the thing, what I love about what Elizabeth does is she's just like really in the journey is what it looks like and what it, it feels like. And even from a very young age, she's like, I'm doing this. I have other goals outside of this. Sure, I want to win. Who doesn't want to win? But like, I don't care if I win or not. I'm just experiencing the journey. And that has probably developed in her such a character and such a tenacity that you're going to see her do amazing things in her life, even after her pageant years are way behind her. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. 
Yeah. So now Elizabeth was working with coaches and she also started to enhance her preparation in several areas of competition. She would get professional headshots taken and have her hair and makeup sponsors, all of which helped to um, elevate her look and message. In her final year of high school, she competed at Miss Collegiate America, representing Florida. She placed in the top 15 against other famous pageant queens, including Savvy Shields, Miss America 2017, and Sarah Rose Summers, Miss USA 2018. What a mm. baller pageant that must have been. <laughs> right? Like, looking back, you're like, oh, it's amazing. Um, as her runway walk image and brand identity continued to flourish and grow, she pursued her modeling career through World's Perfect Pageant for uh, for size years, for five years. <laughs> the scoring for this system is much different than your typical pageant, but Elizabeth would still win Best Interview every year as a teen. Elizabeth completed her undergraduate degree at the University of Miami studying environmental policy. Afterwards, she went and completed her master's at the University of Florida, graduating with a 4.0, no shocker there, and now she works as a web developer for a business consulting firm. Nice. And as mentioned, the words quit and retire just aren't in Elizabeth's vocabulary. Why stop when there is so much more potential to grow? Elizabeth's first title was as Miss Earth Florida, fitting considering she spent several years advocating for environmental health and safety. At the National Miss Earth United States, which is now called Miss Nation of the States, directed by Evan Sko, she won the elemental title of U.S. Miss Earth Eco. This propelled her into several international pageants, competing, representing the United States. Each international pageant she competed in found herself explaining to her peers how the U United States is a melting pot of cultures and that she is a proud Chinese American now representing the entire country across the world. She competed in Taiwan as the U.S. Charity Queen amongst 86 other contestants from around the world, and her roommate later went on to win Miss Universe Sweden. So that's a nice little perk. <laughs> that's awesome. And then she got to compete in Australia after she made top five at the Pageant of the World, at Miss Tourism Planet in Greece, at Miss Face of Beauty International in India. And one thing was consistent across each international pageant she competed in, the experience itself of traveling across the world and exploring iconic landmarks such as the Taj Mahal and the Sydney Opera House with women from all over the world was just as beautiful as winning. Which is another coaching moment because I think a lot of contestants enter pageants where the prize package has a lot of travel opportunities, but they're missing opportunities to compete in pageants that the competition is travel in and of itself. And when you are competing in a pageant, usually that pageant staff has arranged for the red carpet to be rolled out for you wherever you go. You're never going to get some of the behind the scenes access or the conveniences when you're traveling that you'll get as a pageant contestant. So don't always think about finding a system that will let you travel if you win. Cause so compete to travel. If you're competing to travel the world, compete with pageants that allow you to travel the world in competition, not feeling like you have to win to be able to do so. Yeah. I, and I remember you saying in, in a prior podcast, this was one of your regrets of pageantry is like not looking outside of the different systems that you knew and really exploring it. But also it was way more challenging for you because you, I mean, there was no resource interactive directory like pageant planet where you can say right. like, which one is going to allow me the opportunity to travel. And so there was no centralized database of all those, those pageants. Well, like you listening, you, you now have that with pageant planet where you can do your own research and see all these different systems. But I mean, to go to India, like to go to Greece, to go to Australia, all that is just so cool that pageantry opened up those opportunities for her. And how much better is that going to make her as a, as a human? Because my mind always expands and I feel like I come back more evolved whenever I go to a new country and see life from a different perspective. So hey, great job, yeah. Elizabeth. Yeah, for sure. Competing against upwards of 86 women from different countries combined with her never quit mindset empowered Elizabeth to focus on the journey and the experience. She was proud to be doing something she never thought was possible at a young age, representing the United States as a Chinese woman. 
Several years of competing internationally never scared Elizabeth. However, there is one system that always gave Elizabeth a pit in her stomach, Miss USA. Even with starting two charity organizations, traveling around the world, having a strong background in academics, and dozens of pageant titles and awards, Elizabeth was still in- intimidated by the Miss USA competition. And this meant that she had to do it. If she could not get over fear, she would just do it scared, which is a quote by Will Smith. Elizabeth took a semester off to prepare for Miss Florida USA state pageant, and she focused on competing, preparing physically, developing a network for uh, for sustainability in her community. To put it simply, she was crushed when she didn't place in the top 20 at that pageant. Keep in mind that she had just come off a four international pageant representative streak and did not make the my finals was a very humbling experience. Elizabeth realized while she was focused, she wasn't focused on the right things. She was too concerned about not having abs and yo-yo dieting that led her to have an unhealthy mindset. Mm. And like, keep in mind, like she took a whole semester off and she's a you know 4.0 student and very involved. And so she, she gave it her, her all, but then what she realizes, oh, she's just focusing on the wrong thing, which happens to us all from time to time. If she wanted to compete at Miss USA, she would have to clean out all the negative thinking and the mindset. She dedicated the next year to focusing on herself first. She knew she didn't want to seek validation from others and knew that when she did indeed go back, that her perspective um, was going to be much wiser. This is when Elizabeth decided to take her environmental sustainability platform from the community to the stage. If she wanted to promote this as a local title holder and actually have others listen to her message, she would need to take this on a deeper level. This is when she decided to wear a garbage dress, which sounds hilarious, on stage from discarded materials from her office and home. There is huge excessive waste issue around the world in modern society, especially with fast fashion. And Elizabeth was dedicated to having her message come across with or without the crown. Mm, yeah. And for those of you that maybe aren't familiar with the fur term fast fashion, another word is disposable fashion. And um, for those of us living inside of the United States, that's something like Old Navy, where shirts are like, you know, five, 10 bucks, something like that. It's like, oh, I'll just wear it and it doesn't matter if it has to be quality or whatever. So you just throw it out and get a new one. Um, so it's things like that that you know contribute to such a high amount of waste. But Elizabeth was on her way to Miss Florida USA 2020 and she had cleaned up her mindset, her eating habits and her environment and she was in all ways ready. And that was when she snapped two ligaments and sustained a broken ankle weeks before the pageant. It's like, come on. Life could be so unfair. What was the universe doing? Like, I know. This poor girl. So like she could have a bruise, black eye, broken nail, anything other than a broken leg, really. And she had come this far and she wasn't about to give up because that's Elizabeth's true nature, tenacious, as you said. Remember, like the Q word quit is like not for Elizabeth. It doesn't exist in her vocabulary. So this was one of the most peaceful pageant experiences she ever had. She knew she was whole and her why and why um, it would show from the interview and on stage. And she came out in both swimsuit and evening gown in her garbage made dress and making the best of the broken leg. You could clearly see the crutch, but you could not clearly see that her dress was made out of garbage. It was a white asymmetrical shaped gown with two slits for her legs. And she used broken CD pieces to create a flower like embroidery on her waist. Wow. You won't be seeing her compete at Miss USA this year, unfortunately, but she did make it to the top 15 and that's right. And if she, if this is how she placed with all of those misfortunes, imagine if she was at her fullest capacity, you'll be able to find out. Yeah, we're excited to announce that Elizabeth is competing at Miss Florida USA 2021 as Miss Miami Beach USA. And what's great about Miami Beach is that's one of the most vulnerable communities subject to sea level rise. And Miami Beach is also very advanced with her environmental cleanup initiatives. They're one of the first cities in Florida to ban styrofoam, and they are still working daily to eliminate single-use plastics. So it's like the perfect place for her to represent and further her own personal mission. Yeah, and uh, a word to the universe: please no more coffee breaks until like she competes. Um, you know, so nothing else happens. Mm-hmm. But the the best piece of environmental advice for those of you who want to go green is to remember that instant gratification will never supersede long term growth for our Earth. Sustainability 
as a mindset, the biggest mindset is that we are so obsessed with the convenience of a single use products and packaging for marketing. But once you throw those items in the garbage, we tend to forget about the harmful effects that they have. You don't have to be perfect at this at all. The goal is for everyone to be imperfect and imperfect environmentalist. Every and any choice you make to go green is a step in the right direction. You can follow Elizabeth's journey on Instagram at Miss Elizabeth Tran. The last thing to remember is to always, 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 always keep trying and don't let the word quit get in your way. And if you'd like to be a featured contestant for our next podcast, create a contestant profile with your information, hidden facts, and what makes you special, and then email support at pageantplanet.com with the title podcast feature so we can review your profile and we'll let you know after you submit if you're scheduled. And a special shout out to Maria Gerlando for doing the research and thank you for listening. And if you've received any benefits from this show or from months previous, please consider giving us a five-star review. It might seem like a small action, but it really does help us keep the show going. So until next time, take care. Want to become a part of pageant history? Create a free contestant or business profile on pageantplanet.com to unlock hidden features and connect with other experts throughout the world.